rewarded <laughs> for success in the NALCS, or is that train? Rewards will not be given out until the end of this best of five. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know. Well, you let us know what the rewards end up being, but it's certainly going to be a trip to the mid-season invitational if you can win that best of five, joining up with G2 Esports and a plethora of other teams who've already qualified. Yeah, so I'm really interested in the bands right here so far. Azir was banned against TSM the entire semifinals. Also, Maokai being taken away from Hauntzer is really key when COG holds first pick. They're almost forcing TSM into an echo ban here. Yeah, look at the junglers that are up as well. You can't even attack top three right now. Uh, both Nidalee, uh, right. you know, Graves, everybody is up right now. So, oh, they're going to yeah. leave everything up. And TSM wants huge. to get two on the backswing. This is huge. Every single game in the playoffs for these teams, when they've been on red side, they've banned Nidalee. So you would expect a Nidalee first pick, but that's not the way CLG was crafting their pick and ban. They were expecting a Nidalee ban to first pick Echo. Now they're stuck between choices. I don't know. I, since there are okay. so many junglers up, I actually like the first pick Echo. You can take a Kindred. You can be fine as uh, as long as Fenskaren doesn't get off to an extremely quick first three minutes of the game. Right. But that's the uh, that's always the, do it. that's always the issue yeah. with Nidalee though. It's the first you know three four minutes. All right, well, the early Nidalee looks like the choice, as well as because everything else can be traded back and forth. They're looking right now at the Callista AD carry in for double. If both these marksman players, Double and Stixay as well, are really known for this champion, I think she's been the most popular North yeah. American marksman pick overall, and it's going to be that one grabbed early. Six out of the seven playoff games for TSM, Double has played Callista, so he definitely wants to get that lane dominance going and snowball it towards the team fight. Yeah, and I think it's pretty good against Echo too. It definitely is good against Echo, and not only is it good for Double Lift and does he love this champion, it's right into a style of dominating lane, but it's also great for Yellow Star. Because one of the things that Yellow Star has been critiqued for all season long Dying. has been these issues where he's, yeah, he's getting caught out. Uh, but now oh. he's forced to stay with Double Lift and Double Lift can even save his life. This oh, pick was huge for CLG. The triumvirate of top lane is Echo, Poppy, and Maokai. Maokai got banned. Echo hey, what got about first Trundle? Picked, and the Poppy, <laughs> so I said triumvirate. That only means three here, Kobe. Poppy picked up here, and I wonder where she's going to go because, of course, we see Echo is a pretty prolific mid laner. All right, we need to I pop, think you've got your... a little bit because <laughs> this is actually very crazy. There's so many choices that need to be made here. They don't know where Echo's going. It's probably going to be in the mid lane. But then we also have to wonder about the Trundle being thrown in there as well if TSM ends up going with the tank top laner because then Trundle support gains huge value. Oh my goodness, they, they can, can easily it. pick Trundle here. Trundle and AD carry, and I think COG crushes this draft. Yeah, we had this draft actually a couple days ago. I forget if it was in the European semifinal or It was or what. SKT versus KT. It was that, you're right. Game three. It was SKT versus KT in the second, third place match sort of in Korea. And yeah, SKT got Trundle support with basically these three champions otherwise, and it was a really brutal team composition of three tanks plus double marksmen. Yes. Yeah. CLG have 25 seconds to choose what they want those last two champs to be. The only thing we have to wonder though is Aphromoo hasn't played Trundle. It doesn't fit into the style of Stixay needing to be able to win lane. So they won't, I think, get the optimal team fight value out of this, which would be the Trundle pick, but instead with Caitlyn Moore are going very heavy to Morgana has been something that's been very big in North America, and especially Aphromoo has put in a lot of time on this champion. Going to be an extra measure to try and keep Stixay safe. They've got a lot of protection for the back line actually with both Kindred uh, and Morgana here. Caitlyn, you know, she just wants to siege up and set up her traps to keep everybody off her back. Gragas is definitely in a uh, wild card, though, as he comes in with the barrel. Sure. If they can pull off a good ultimate, uh, that can change everything. And it's on Afro to put up a good black shield and stick say to stay far enough away to not get wrecked here. Final pick to come through for TSM. And even though Zed and Azir were banned, he's going to get Corky in the mid lane here for Bjergsen. So double marksman, Nidalee, and two tanks for TSM. Meanwhile, it's Stixay, who had such a great Caitlyn game in the semifinals, getting that champion again. Something really big here with that last pickup, I think, for TSM, and true to their name, uh, is going to be the strength in the mid lane. Nidalee plus Corky is such a powerful mid-jungle combo here, going against a melee mid laner, uh, as well as the Kindred, which does take a little bit extra time there. Uh, and Sven Skarin should have priority early. True. We'll see what kind of leash they give him as well, because sometimes you can boost Nidalee and really just get her off to a very, very quick uh, early game. Yeah, I'm looking at who he's masteries as well. It looks like he's gone for Thunderlords and a lot of AP in his rune page, so I'd expect an AP echo out of this as well. So as a melee, it will be a little bit risky later in the game, but it does speak to CLG not trying to do the giant tank wall, but more just using the echo as an assassin. 
And we'll see how well he can get into the back line and how much he can disrupt the rest of these players. The coaches shake hands. We are here in the game one of the spring championship final. Let us know who is it going to be here in game one. Tweet at Lily Sports, hashtag CLG win, hashtag TSM win for who it's going to be here in game one. This best of five determines who wins the North American Spring Championship as well as who joins G2 Esports and the Flash Wolves at the Mid-Season Invitational. And heavily divided chance in the crowd for both TSM and CLG. I love it, as usual. All right, definitely gonna have to watch deep wards here. CLG in the regular season almost always went for the deep lane swap wards as they run out of the base. Yeah, the early phase here between Svenskeren and Smithy, I think, is going to be very important just because of how dominant Svenskeren has been in these playoffs and, you know, was the MVP against Immortals when they were able to 3-0 them in the semifinals. And that all starts with early game wards and beginning jungle paths. Here it is. They, they're expecting the CLG early invade that they did so often. Yeah. And so they wanted to use Svenskeren as bait and then do an ambush. Uh, but CLG changing it up, going defensive spread here as far as the opening yeah. this time. And now TSM are at a disadvantage. They're walking blind into CLG wards. Yeah, exactly. They got spotted by the early trinket ward that TSM themselves didn't see CLG put down. So all of this is in vision. CLG actually metagamed themselves by expecting what the TSM counter is going to be and already preparing for it. Right, but I still actually like where Stixa is right now because the AD carry is already in the lane without having to be giving away that intel. So even though TSM has gotten the deep lane soft wards, they still don't know where Stixa has been. It's, a, it's actually a fairly rare play to have the AD carries sitting up there as far as how many times you do the late invades and the late swaps. Yeah. So he's got a little bit of an intel advantage early on. You can't get both. You can't set up an ambush to try and counter a CLG invade and get your early wards down first. All right, let's see here. Looks like Stixa is going to stay up on the top side. Yep. And CLG are going to get their lane swap. So lane swap is going to be here as the Morgana from Aphromoo slowly makes his way up there. We will not have actually a hard jungle start. And watching the Braum and the Callista run around the map, it looks like TSM were near the top side. Then after seeing Caitlyn realize they don't want to be part of a two-on-two, -two, so they will make a late trip down here. But look what yep. Darshan gets to do. He gets a full wave. And he's going to delay the turret take. That's the value of the level one play by CLG there. They had the ward, they got the deep ward, and they also camped Stixa up top. So CLG didn't know. And you're seeing their uh -oh. late response to that oh. right now. As Yellowstar nearly makes up for that uh, deficit they were going to be facing. But already, Darshan is getting far more farm than you would ever want him getting in this early of a lane swap scenario, which could end up turning into turret trades. He's already level two in a lane swap That's game. Huge. And that turret's not gonna die anytime soon. I want to see CLG take this early lane swap advantage that they have because they have this poke heavy double ranged uh, duo lane that they were able to shove TSM around the map. I want them to keep this momentum uh, up after the turrets are taken as well. So often people criticize North America for these uh, the ranged support meta that we have here, which is kind of an oddball. Um, but this, if you get the early advantage on turrets and you get the early turrets going down, you can transition very quickly uh, into taking the mid lane turret as well because range supports coming over can put a lot of pressure uh, on that mid lane. And I'm curious to see how both these teams play out their lane swap game because CLG are only keeping the two up there. Who he will just teleport back into the mid lane. But normally a top laner joins in in the turret push. And Darshan, actually a bit late mm -hmm. to the party, will slow down the yeah. rate of turret take. He definitely saved his teleport here. And that funnels a little bit more experience and resources into Stixe uh, than it does into Darshan because they're not sharing as much as TSM are. Because if we look at the experience right now, uh, we have Darshan who's still at level two and a half. And Hunter's actually pretty much exactly the same as far as experience goes. So despite not getting the wave, because of the amount of experience Hunter shared with yeah. Yellowstar and Doublelift, the top laner himself is there, and they're a little bit slow on that turret. They're yeah. going to have to shove I mean, this I, in now, actually. They're probably going to go down within a few seconds of each other. I think um, they're going to have to bounce this off the second wave, though. Yeah, they, they have to shove this now. Yeah, they have to shove it. This is not the cleanest of plays by TSM, whereas COGs does seem a lot cleaner. Uh, yeah. Well, CLG gonna set up that freeze pretty easily. Darshan takes it down with a half-health caster minion. And he's actually auto-attacking minions a little bit more. I want to see if he does push his wave in. It will be Kalista and Brahma heading topside, so Darshan would optimally push this. 
Once he realizes that's happening here, he True. does not have deep trinkets to see that, though. He's going to so push it anyway, though. Choice is. Well, I, he think, is pushing. I think you could infer, because what's happening right now is we know the Caitlyn Morgana matchup is going to be trying to continually dodge the Callista Braum. So that means you're double shoving the lanes and going for the four turret trade or the three turret trade as opposed to just uh, one turret on the outside. Uh, which means you want to shove as much as possible to delay the other AD carry from getting it all the way into your yep. turret. I would think that it would kind of be the other way around, right? Yeah, Caitlyn Morg wants the 2-1-2. Yeah. Two two. Like, yeah, TSM took a bad lane it's swap exactly. to get away. It's, it's the other way around, yeah. yeah. But because, yeah, TSM trying to hide Styx is in the bot lane first, he's pushing this one as, in, as fast as he can. The Morgana now joining him up as well, so we will see the bot lane turret beset right now. In terms of total gold, keep in mind these teams are basically equal. TSM swapped away from a really bad 2-1-2, two two and via the lane swap are afloat right now. Smithy getting in there with the early counter jungle. People often underestimate uh, Kindred, even though she's a devour jungler. Uh, the early skirmishing is extremely powerful. Mm. Especially, it's, it really gives the advantage to whichever jungler finds the other at a camp, because you've right. expended all of your abilities on that camp. Missing cooldowns, missing some health, never a good place to be. Fervor, also a nice thing about Callista is if you ever land a Q on a champion, that's two stacks on Fervor right away. So you press your auto is just that much more powerful. Yeah. And for all the excitement we had about the lane swap, it is equalizing yeah. very closely. And then what is also equal, which is a bit unexpected, is the mid lane matchup, considering there's been no jungle pressure. Uh, who he used to teleport to get back in the lane very early. But he's keeping up as a melee versus Corky uh, extremely well in CS. There is an important point about keeping up, though, in that Stixay has actually grown a CS lead over double lift. Everyone else is pretty much equal to, like, within plus or minus three, but you've got a 10 minion lead for Stixay. As CLG have just found a way to get more last hits, uh, either be a showing up to the lane sooner. Again, there were seven CS that Darshan got that Hans was never a part of, and that's just kind of percolated through the team. Yeah, as far as the mid lane matchup, uh, who he using the teleport to get back to lane. That's how he's keeping up in CS there. Yeah, uh, Echo's one of the few melee champions, you know, because of the time winder. You can try and shove very quickly, even against the range champion, and use teleport to get back. That will be a big thing yeah. later as well. You know, double teleport has been huge recently, and CLG love uh, the mid-game trading objectives. They'll have that extra global to work with. Yeah. And Bjergsen will only have the semi-global of package, which exactly. is definitely a, <laughs> good, cool a good tool to answer things with and counter and, uh, global with, but uh, not quite the same. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out that second global from CLG, who he is going for an AP Echo build. That early Negatron Cloak speaks to him going Abyssal Scepter first item, right? an ability power focus build, a damage focused build. He's going to have a pretty good time, I think, fighting Bjergsen with that kind of an item build. And I want to see how much you can do with the more assassin focused build order. It's, it's at this point now the rarity for Echoes to be building AP and supposed to tank. We see it sometimes, but not yeah. as often. When they go mid lane, it's more of a 50 50, but I absolutely agree with you. And the Abyssal Scepter will give him an early game power spike. We have to pay attention to the itemization breakpoints in this one as well. Uh, in this lane swap scenario, 6A has gone call and very early Boots of Swiftness. So he's just looking to run around quickly, farm, and not be very combat effective until probably his second major item. Yeah. Whereas we're looking at double lift, he's skip call, gone straight to recurve bow, and Callista spikes much faster off of just getting the Hurricane. Right. So when that happens, double lift gets Hurricane, Bjergsen gets Trinity Force, that's exactly when TSM is gonna be looking to make an aggressive play. And exactly when who he's gonna be squishy, an official scepter against a Callista never feels great. Nidalee, uh, with the Rift Herald buff, just feels so good. Oh god. I don't think you can have more early game tools <laughs> in the game right now, but uh, yeah, Spence Garen able to get in there. Yep. Quick red buff takeaway and get back to his own side. Bjergsen gonna be hard pressed here. This is what I was talking yep. about. The rotation of the uh, North American range supports over to mid lane after they have the early lead on their towers and they chip down mid lane here. Absolutely, the Caitlyn Morg trying to get as much done as possible, but Bjergsen does have a blue buff, and Sven Skarin is still pretty powerful, so they were unable to get really any work done on that first push. TSM seemed to be ready for it, and the question will be how long COG stays with that push versus when will double have come back, and it looks like COG actually has to abandon the push right away since Corky had the blue buff, and Doublelift will actually catch up in CS and punish COG for making that mid lane attempt. Feels good and competitive there for Smithy. Able to get his first stack on Kindred off of the Krug. Nine minutes in off of, uh, yeah, bot side Rift Herald. It's actually worth pointing out, by the way, for people who don't know about the mechanics of Kindred, it's actually not random entirely which jungle camp gives you the mark. It's actually a sort of staggered situation. The first three are on Scuttle or Rafters, and it gets progressively deeper into the jungle as you get more stacks. So when people see, like, 
Oh, he got Rift. He got Rift Scuttle so early on. It's like, well, he's probably going to. So it still is random. It's just the number yeah. of options. They're all that good can, options. That can spot Right. It. They're always good options. It's not, you don't get Krugs till you got three stacks or more. So it's not nearly as difficult nice in piece. the early game. Uh oh, here we go. Early yeah, gameplay. Oh, the phase dive actually got interrupted, knocked into the air. The shield's coming up, but he can't hit it in time. First blood comes through for double if Great Fate's call on a yellow star. Yeah, I love the attempt there. After they'd been swapping back and forth and Stixay was having to crash into a big wave, they were able to sneak through the river to make that play possible. And this is exactly what TSM want. This is all according to their game plan here. They want to jump off to those first item power spikes you were talking about, Jet. That first blood is going to do a lot getting them there. Yeah, that was before the item power spikes, as you mentioned, so they will be stronger around the return of the next Rift Herald and the next Dragon. That's a very critical kill. And who got that kill? Double lift. Huge. Money couldn't have There's gone into a better spot for TSM. Huge deal for him. Now Lungs Road picked up as he go goes towards the rest of his items, but he is now much more powerful than Stixay and will be for quite some time. TSM can ride this wave of a 1,700 gold lead pretty early on in this one with just a kill and the extra farm they're now getting up. You can see one of the big beneficiaries, Svenskeren, up 700. Yes, some of that's the 100 gold assist, but the rest of that is him simply jungling faster than Smithy with that first round. Nidalee, pick. baby. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is Nidalee, but that's that's the price that CLG paid for first picking Echo instead. Also, there's been, you know, an interesting transition for Smithy throughout the year as he started to focus a lot more on hard farming in the jungle and counter jungling his opponents. Uh, taken away from a lot of observation of, of the LCK, where the junglers farm uh, prolifically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even during the regular season, I think the two best junglers at counter jungling uh, were actually Rainover and X Smithy, because what their strategy was is anytime the enemy would try and gank them, you just go and take their jungle to counter the yeah. ganks. And it, Which sounds very easy. It, it sounds, sounds very simple, but, but it's really hard to know when to go in, know when you're not going to get counter ganked, uh, have the right wards up so you know when the gank is coming. But so far, Sven Skarin has just been farming so hard. Like, where is Exmithy actually going to counter jungle right now? Everything is down, and he's clearing the wards away as well. Yeah, Sven's even taking away the Raptors himself from Exmithy, so it's getting a bit more bleak here for the CLG jungle. There is Yellow Star. Battle with Darshan for ward superiority. And even Devil comes up, so yeah, even Trigger Ward goes down. TSM controlling his bot jungle, and yet another camp stolen away from McSmithy, who now has to walk topside without much to take. Yeah, it looks like COD's gonna try and transition into a 1-3-1, though, with Echo and Poppy in the side lanes and put Stixay and Morgana in the mid lane. Uh, the question will be whether or not TSM can match both of those Poppy and Echo's in the side lanes because I don't really think that the Caitlyn Morgana is there to actually take the turret. I think Bjergsen can hold that off pretty easily by himself. Yeah, very curious here. Actually, CLG are collapsing into the red side jungle. They've got one pink ward set up, trying to lay down the rest of the vision control and take away this red from Sven Skarin. Yeah, it's a two level advantage for Sven Skarin. So this is a dicey proposition. Spite advantage for Sven plus execute. Oh, got it. Smithy gets it anyway, very nice. Really good stuff. Will there be a for counter, sure? though? There's trapped in that red buff while TSM is actually pushing the mid lane. Red buff two. or mid turret is not the best, but no. they've got some time. They're going to get a lot of damage on it. It's going to go at least below half HP. Morgana close to being in range. Yellowstar can still stay around. Of course, Fate's Call can always keep him safe. So Yellowstar able to play aggro. Bjergsen coming in. Yeah, there's the Dark Binding, and they will choose to save Fate's Call, but Yellowstar gets really low because of that. Yeah. Saving the cooldown means Yellowstar's got a recall. Base call is huge for TSM right now because Double Lift and Yellowstar are basically the team fight control for TSM right now. Uh, Spence Garen and Bjergsen are the Pokemon. Oh my oh, goodness! That's an down. AP Echo, remember? That is uh -huh. not your normal top lane Echo a building center. And, and Monster was laning against the Poppy, so it's a completely different damage type that he has to swap into now. That's not the yeah. situation TSM wants to be in. And that's such a good thing for CLG, running double teleport. Those champions are basically interchangeable, and how good it is that they have two different damage types getting to abuse the itemization. And I really like how CLG are playing to the situation that they find themselves in this game because of that first blood. They want to keep this game spread out here and contest these smaller objectives and force these small fights so that TSM don't group up and use this, you know, Callista uh, while she's on her Hurricane, Trinity Force, Corky ready to go, keep them spread out. Absolutely agree. CLG it is a dangerous game, runs faster. Yeah. The early Swifties, I mean, all the, all the things we're seeing, all the gameplay we're seeing from CLG, from item choices to lane assignments, speaks to them playing a more spread out style. That's kind of always been one of CLG's trademarks was their ability to macro play.
they didn't pick up all the individual stars who were the best in their role and the best yep. in their continent. But it's been their teamwork that's gotten them this far. And their specialty has been pressure in all three lanes, also known as the 1-3-1. One, one. But when TSM has been making this resurgence, it's been with Hauntzer on a tank and team fighting, quite honestly. So it's going to be an interesting stylistic matchup, especially in this game when COG is looking more for the 1-3-1 one, one in TSM, is looking for the team fights. When they are the stronger team fight team, though, and they don't have enough pressure in the sidelines on CO side lanes on COG side, it was an easy dragon take for TSM. Yeah. Cole has finally paid off now for Stick Say, so that gold lead has shrunk quite a bit now as CLG are fast approaching their own important power spikes. We already know that who he had as Abyssal Scepter, but now he's going towards the Morella Namicon, it looks like. And Stick Say isn't too terribly far away from that Hurricane coming through. Hurricane plus 70 AD from items is honestly pretty good for Caitlyn, and 5 on 5s will look good for Stick Say once that item comes through. Yeah, the 5 on 5, uh, you know, with the, uh, with Athamu on the Morgana rounding it out, looks so much better, because usually when you see the Kindred versus Gragas matchup, it's this, you know, 50-50 game where is Gragas going to have to use his ultimate to engage or something like that, or is he going to be able to save it to knock people out of Kindred ultimate? Even if he saves it, uh, Aphromoo can black shield whoever's low on the Kindred ultimate, and they get yep. to stay in it, uh, even if the barrel does come down. Now, speaking of Kindred, Smithy, as he kills down that Rift Scout on the bottom side is 11 stacks on Devourer, so still plenty of room to grow. Does have three Kindred marks, though. The various counter jugglings allowed him to grab those three easy marks now, and now it's going to be into the deeper camps and champion kills to get any higher than this. But Xmithy will look to keep playing aggressively around the map. Stack number 12 on Devour from the Gromp, who he's still battling with Hauntzer, who again has an itemization lead until finally the Spectre's Cowl has come through for him. Nice binding on a Svenskar, but no follow-up available. Yeah, because CLG are doing such a good uh, job of swapping lanes around and contesting these small objectives and forcing these tiny fights with TSM to try and pull them around the map, uh, you know, Hauntzer has had to split his itemization. He was building straight for that Sunfire, but stopped halfway through, got, had to get that Cowl to be able to answer uh, the flat uh, magic reduction here from who he and his early Abyssal Scepter. So even though TSM still have this early gold lead, CLG have played around it very well. And it's good for CLG that they have Umbrella Namakon at all. Because keep in mind, there are several self-healers on TSM. You've got Double If, who's going to go double lifesteal by the end of it all. You've got Bjergsen, who will probably get some at some point, and Svenskeren and Hanser, who definitely will, just via their kits. So uh, a nice, I don't want to say happy accident. I think part of the reason that CLG are running this build is because of this. Yeah. But it's certainly very nice to have. You kind of wanted to say happy accident. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it partially is, right? I think you would have gotten this build anyway, but it's certainly more effective here. Merlin Omicron's great item for the Echo. Yeah, uh, almost right. regardless. And yeah, this is still anyone's game. So much of it will come down to the way the team fights are started. Like, it's not like COG has a terrible team fighting composition by any no. means, but the way in which they force the team fights will be set up. Oh, with and crucial with poke lands That's here. Huge. Plus, they have the uh, going in for it though. Whoa. Oh no! Bro gets deleted. Yellow star in the front line, but he's still okay. Fates call is up. Teleport coming in for Hauntzer. Jumps forward, gets knocked <laughs> right back out. Darshan says nope. But it's still a one for zero, yeah. and the mid tower being gone. Even though he's ejected, the damage has been done. Pearson dumps off a huge amount of damage before packaging away, and they finish off Aphromoo so quickly there. Yeah, he's a level, little baby this level six more Morgana, Morgana, right? He's gonna get oh, blown up, and the though. turret had already died. This is the poke component of the TSM comp we're talking about. The Corky and Nidalee both landed skill shots oh, yeah. onto Stixay. That is the perfect happy little accident there, Freak, you were looking for. <laughs> no accident, though, from TSM, as both of those guys landing their skill shots onto the primary target. CLG trying to push back here, though. Caitlyn looking to siege up. Afro revived, but the minion wave is gone, so how much damage can they really deal? It's actually not very much. Maybe yeah. 100 damage overall here. Rapid Fire Cannon, actually the first item for Stick Say, so it's interesting. We you mostly... the headshots easy. Sure, like, uh, we actually mostly see Hurricane first from Caitlyn. In terms of plurality, it's the more common first item. It's a team fight item. Rapid Fire Cannon is specifically a turret killing one. CLG continuing to double up yep. on their want to hit turrets, not champions. They want to chip the mid lane turret while they have pressure in the side lanes and never get caught in a full-on team fight. But I don't know if they can actually create the never get caught in a full-on team fight version sure. of this with Flash being up on Hauntzer and also having the doubled up initiation of Double Lift throwing a Braum into the team. Yeah, and I really like that we've incorporated two of the more exciting tanks from the top lane. Poppy and Gragas take a lot of skill to land uh, their initiation or their uh, disengage tools, so 
Darshan and Hans are going to be hard pressed to land their skill shots. Trying to say Maokai's easy, well. Kobe? Yes. <laughs> it's yes, a targeted yes. route. That's of a course. yes. Very route. easy. <laughs> They're chipping away at that chair pretty well, though. Yeah, got some decent damage down to this one. Both teams have claimed one dragon themselves to keep in mind this. Dragon number two for either team is up in one minute. And if CLG gets that, it means turret chipping gets a lot better where that single auto attack puts on the 10 times current level damage burn, which is a pretty big deal when you attack twice with level 10 Caitlyn. CSM doing a good job of slowly growing that gold lead. But it's just the outer turrets. Yeah. And CLG did get that early dragon, remember, so they are not really hard pressed on neutral objective control either. Yeah. But TSM have still done a good job of team fighting. They got the gank in from Devil if Yellow started the mid lane, and then again the mid lane siege. So you gotta feel good about this bot lane of TSM. Yeah. 100% KP, plenty of kills. CLG not too perturbed. This standing gold in this outer turret looking very juicy for them. My question is always, well, you know, as a team with an outer turret. Ooh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's two people though. Built so this. if Darshan tried to fight Double if Daniela Star, he would lose. But um, but if they can collapse on him with more, I don't feel like CLG is far enough to this play. Yeah, he, he showed. He's got so now Darshan does dodge the slow from Yellow Star and out walks away the TSM support. Botlin will be under control yet again. TSM still sitting on this two and a half thousand gold lead and with Dragon F, we'll see what the next move is. Yeah, I'm CLG remaining focused in the face of the gold lead. They've put so much practice into 1-3-1 that they're going to continue pressuring top turret right now, give up this Dragon to TSM. Number two doesn't mean a whole lot to them. They will claim that global gold in the mid lane as well. Yeah, haunts her with the Spectre's Cal and Kindle Gem, though. Oh, they won't. Looking mighty TSM, tough. quick rotation up, and they defend it, even though it only has double-digit health, I believe. The more these plays happen, the more likely TSM is to win the game. CLG is trying to go for trades, but they are not getting their side of the trade. So they're just giving stuff away, and TSM's been able to stop it time and again. They get the dragon, they stop the mid lane push, oh. and they can also retreat to get deep wards within CLG's jungle. So a lot of good things happening for TSM 21 and a half minutes in. Feeling good for TSM to get revenge from last split's championship, where wow. CLG 3 0 them. Wow, in vision as well. The pings come down from TSM. I believe Hauntzer told the rest of the team they know this cooldown on Echo's teleport now. That's a very big tool for CLG that they're counting on for the mid game. Turret HP in that mid lane is 150, so a stiff breeze would knock that one down. Or a rapid fire cannon auto attack from Stix A. But if you can ever get in range, yeah. that's the requirement. And by the way, that teleport burned because of how risky it is to run these 1 3 1s. And sometimes you have to play overly cautious. They lost vision of TSM members who he thought, you know, maybe the rest of the team thought, and they made the call that TSM were collapsing on him, and it wasn't safe to do a regular recall, so they yeah. burned the teleport for it. Uh, Better safe than sorry is sort of the reason there from CLG, but uh, TSM very happy to get that mid lane teleport down. Exactly, and it's because TSM just has more pressure on the map. The fact that that was the top side of the map that TSM still had control of after taking a dragon speaks to how far behind CLG is or how scared they have to be right now due to TSM's control. I mean, if you toggle the vision right now, you can look, take a look at the Fog of War and you'll get a feel for how scary it is to run 131 when TSM have this much vision control on the map. This many wards out, it's uh, and CLG are really lacking. They are, uh, they have two scrying orbs though. Six uh, A is coming back up pretty soon as well. Yeah, but, but yeah, this map is gold for them. This mini map has chicken pox. There's so many red <laughs> dots all over it, and CLG realistically sees so very little. You speak to the difficulty, and it's going to be very hard. TSM has done an amazing job of playing the vision control game, despite the fact that they're not running a second sight zone. Of course, neither is CLG, but that's mostly pink ward control then. Yeah. You can see even defensive traps have to come down from Stixay to, to cover up the left-hand side flank. They know there's no vision there. And that's that's how they defend themselves, is some Caitlyn traps. When one of CLG's hopes is going to be Caitlyn, he's managed to complete the call, get the bonus gold, he's finished his Infinity Edge, so he's working towards the third and fourth item. I think if he gets to a full build Caitlyn, then they might be able to pull off some team fights if Stixay is able to play very safe. Yeah. You can also see how TSM are trying to abuse this a uh, small window that they do have the package on Bjergsen because it provides so much well, uh, team fight power. Uh, they press up, yeah, they pressed up yeah. in all lanes though when they had it. You can see Bjergsen right at the uh, very edge of the turret. Yellow Star here, actually gonna have to make the call there uh, for Double F to pop the Fates call. And yeah. there goes a 
pretty big tool for their team fight. It is definitely a long cooldown. Shouldn't be too bad for TSM, though, with Dragon not on the field for over two minutes. And they are not really an easy objective for either side. Oh, it should baby. be the worst consideration. Ink fight. Hanser and Darshan doing battle. Waits out. Steadfast presence goes right back in as they continue to fight each other. Yeah. In this small matchup, like, if you have some distance between Gragas as Poppy, I think you wait for uh, the Body Slam to start, because Body Slam is actually one of the slower moving yeah. dashes, and it, you can reactionary uh, pop that W as soon as Gragas starts moving, and you'll get the interrupt pretty much every time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's definitely harder on live when you have more ping, but for these guys, they got it! Before to do it reactionary. There it Finally is. That's knocked the... it down. <laughs> Woo! Right, with the turret score equalized, the game is back to 1,800 gold difference. About 1,000 of that is TSM getting kills from the 2-0 start to this game, but yeah. the rest of it is actually a farm lead. Yeah, and it's all it really is all about the completed items as well. You know, you could talk about a, a few extra gold here and there uh, for whichever team, but re everybody really sitting on two powerful items here for TSM and even an extra needlessly large rod for t uh, Sven Skarin on the Nidalee. And... Uh, See if they look to move in and pressure. They might just wait again till the next package window for TSM, as they've been play taking it fairly cautiously so far. Well, it looks like the next play might be for Dragon, though. That's up in 1 minute 15 seconds. That would be their third, which would be quite nice. TSM getting the rotational advantage. A knock into the wall. Not going to be much against Darshan. Doublelift was around to follow up on the damage, and he will get some attacks on this turret here. Yeah, TSM are first to the show. They're all here. down here. Oh, Yellowstar tanking turret there. No problem. Survive. Yeah, Italy. Italy. <laughs> hey, he's going to be just fine on this one. Dragon now 55 seconds away as the Corky continues to push in the mid lane. 272 minions on Bjergsen, a pretty high clip for him. Yeah, and the way COD is playing this is they're going to force TSM to make an aggressive move. They're going to force a dive because they're almost never grouping as five versus five. There was four people down there for COD to defend and who he was top lane on Echo on teleport. Either TSM pushes really hard on here or it's going to be a double TP in the back from COG. Never mind. Here comes the flank. Yellow Star is low and no fence call comes out. The support's gone. Oh. Here's the team fight. Oh, it's going to be the next one. Devil is gone. The ulti back in. That was beautiful from Huhi. A three for zero. COG's got control. They look in for Bjergsen. The flash stun comes in from Darshan. The follow up there. That's four in a row. What a team fight, CLG. Oh, my goodness. The execution on CLG's double teleports. Once yeah. again, so ridiculously effective. They wait and bide their time until TSM grouped up in the mid lane. And yep. such easy access to the back line for Huhi and Darshan. Both of them playing that fight so well. And I think they're getting this Baron. They lulled TSM into a false sense of security there. How many times did they set up a siege in a lane and not been punished with COG just pushing off? And TSM thinking, maybe we can get it this time. But no, the immediate double TP, the perfect flank. And I can't wait to see that one again. You and me both. CLG with the home, have double home guard right teleports now. here. And Baron is going to be a big, big deal. All right, so Hansa does have teleport. Guard and the other one from the lane, but it's on exactly the same ward. And the binding at the start on Yellow Star makes it's it never a disaster. Resulted. For and it was a pink ward, so TSM had no idea. Hanser never gets to be a part of this. Look at who he, he oh takes out God. double lift, then immediately Sven Skarin dodges the rocket as well. And Darshan goes in to finish off Bjergsen here with the flash stun onto the edge of the wall there. Those guys just wrecked the entire team. Yeah, and a lot of the times the mark of a good team is how much they make their kills count. COG gets their first four kills of the game, and that means they get Baron as well as Dragon and take themselves from about a 3k deficit straight to even. And look at the setup for that play as well. CLG, we had, we'd, we'd been talking about how hard of a time they'd been uh, having getting vision out on the map. Before that, they had set up three pink wards. So the three pink wards deep in mid lane, they could choose any one of those to go on. Even if TSM found one, there are two more Easter eggs left. And CLG, they know that TSM don't have vision of these pink wards. Obviously, the true sight there. So that double teleport is going to be a huge surprise. It's home guard boosted now that they've waited so long into the game. And Hanser never got to join. Well, TSM lined up like pigs to the slaughter. The double TP from CLG worked so well. And now they're looking to continue the siege. Hurricane got completed because of that team fight. Stick say, yeah, rapid fire cannon and dragon number two is gonna really like attacking these turrets now. That zero there at yep. the top says That's it all. Big goose egg. It's all, and it was all team coordination. It wasn't, wasn't really Hauntzer's fault. It was a team issue, which is crazy that COG was able to set up that play because of how 
they had no map control five minutes yep. prior to that fight, but they got the nice pink ward down, and now they're working on pushing an inhibitor turret. Meanwhile, Bjergs is not actually here right now. They've got a TP coming in. Now, this is going to be the flight. This is going for TSM to do exactly what CLG did to them. Yellow's trying to get damage to the front line. In comes Hotsack. Double and gets off Huhi, and here comes the rest of the fight. Kinder keeps him alive for a little while longer, but it's a double for Nautilus. Oh, now, gets one. Expect either one of the shots, and it's a whole bunch of kills. TSM have gotten four already. Darshan is the last one alive, but he has nowhere to go. Stunned up once again. Can't find the target. And an ace for TSM firing back. Revenge for TSM. Hauntzer with an epic flank right there. And the Gragas ultimate does find the people sitting on Kindred. And Bjergsen had his package oh up here. So even though he was just in the mid lane, he can fly into the fight as Hauntzer's flanking. Who he's caught on the backside. Hauntzer gets in. And then the fight gets cut in half by Bjergsen's package. Bjergsen and Yellow Star. Yellow Star starting that off with the Braum ultimate right down the middle of CLG. Great back-to-back -back team fight execution here from both teams. And that was a whole lot of double of ah, I love this rivalry was, freak. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes man. you're up, the other times you're down. Four for zero into a five for one. We are dead even oh, here. Oh, goodness. Yet again, the smallest of leads now, TSM 1400. The next item in for double if is not far away now as he moves with QSS in towards probably a Bloodthirster then. And we gotta see how these builds continue. Zonia's not far away from Sven Skarin. You guys talked about the completed item spikes coming through. We have 70% crit chance in the Corky of Bjergsen as well. So you cannot fail to respect him. Finally, a Zonia's for Huhi. He might finally survive these team fights. And you can see, yeah, this was the double if show. 4,700 for him and Hanser. Huge Infinitely work. better than the last fight. He also was the one to get right onto Stixa. And it's not like Stixa and Xmithy weren't able to pump out some damage in that fight, but yeah. it was the, the final killing blows that all fell to TSM because of the flank position there. But you're seeing it's not how fed the members are, it's how the positioning is. Mm -hmm. right, last fight, Hauntzer couldn't even show up. This fight, who he did 700 damage, didn't get to do anything useful. Yeah. Like, that's the comparison here. If you're alive, you can do plenty of damage, but these guys are getting one shot. Or failing to arrive. Who he now has Azonias on Echo as well. Yep. Opens up some more interesting plays with him because of the ultimate as well. You can set up and be in position for your ultimate to actually deal damage on top of you if everybody tries to group up and forgets somehow. That, uh, <laughs> that's what Echo does. Oh, yeah, says. Echo can do that. Like, oh, yeah, let's crowd around, get that uh, last hit on him. Or you get really good flank position, you find a chaotic fight. Oh, Darshan. Oh, we're really is. good, hard to get. Darshan burns the flash. He's going to look for the ulti, but only knocks Nubbleth into the air. Here comes Echo. They try to turn it around. Oh, the Darshan stun. doesn't the die around steal. until the end. But now the turnaround oh, goes. goes the Echo ultimate, and he's still going to chase for more. Smith thinks it's a kill picked up. Now Yellowstar left alone, and he's going to turn into a black hole of death. And CLG wins a three for one. Double lift. I think he QSS something from Darshan early, and then he was on the very edge of who he stunned. Get oh taken down. God. CLG now the ones to take out the team they fight made. and take the turret. So many plays off of their teleports right now. It looked like a sure thing for Darshan to die there, but who he comes in with the teleport into a chain of stuns. And yeah, Doublelift thought he'd just drain tank that with his Bloodthirster QSS and Blade of the Rune King, but the stun catches him and three people still dead. I think CLG's gonna go through for an inhibitor here. Gonna get a hell of a lot done right there. Turret goes down. The respawn's coming in the next 10 seconds right now, but it's not gonna be in time before the inhibitor itself dies. Be kind of careful. Slow. And actually, no, CLG will back off. Enough threat was there that with the home guard boost turning on, CLG have to run away and recall in time before Dragon and Baron. Yeah, and that's huge. That the inhibitor still stands for TSM is great for them. All right, let's take a look at what double if QSS is yeah. here, actually, because uh, he gets stocked up, up with here. the old knockback. He just QSS oh. early. There was, yeah, I think it was the slow from Time Rewinder or Time. Uh, yeah, anyway, time it was nothing. Time yeah. Rewinder. Uh, I mean, by that point, COG had arrived to the fight earlier than TSM anyway. So even if he did QSS, I still think he's gonna fall. But he but could he have gotten some crucial damage out if he didn't get stunned. And he has double life still. So yeah. Yeah. I could. He was very close to being able to just Callista all the way around that fight. But oh boy, that's what these games are decided on: split second decisions. Split second miss positions. Can I mean, you double teleport with, in? With back to back team fights, you know, being determined by the great teleports and set up from both teams, uh, for it to come down to something micro like that in, yeah. the, in the uh, bottom lane there is actually pretty big. CLG striking back, but still the gold lead marginal.
Sure, and it's, the game's just entirely been about these individual plays. Is the flank good? Is the outplay good? Did you QSS the right ability? Now a Mercurial Scimitar done for Stixay, so four item Caitlyn is certainly going to be online. And unless he gets one shot by a miraculous Gragas ultimate, Stixay's going to be fine. And keep in mind, you can QSS flash out of a knockback and go be right back where yep. you were before. So proper play by Stixay, he's going to have uptime. Caitlyn was definitely Stixay's best performing champion in the semifinals, but in the other games, okay. he was fairly questionable. And this is bold. It's blind. Double but teleport's they coming know what's in. happening. Okay, get CLG it, wants him. Atiyah will get the Baron first. So now it's up to the team fight. Does CLG even want it? Who he has to ult to stay alive, but he's still going to need chase down. A oh. nice knockback on a two. Javelin hits as well. Will we find more of an engage? Zonia's into the Ooh, shield. He's, he's alive for now. He's going to have to run away. Now Darshan to the backside only gets a simple <laughs> knockup. And now it's oh, nowhere no. to go. But there's a re-engage and look for Bjergsen. Can't quite get him though. Binding his oh. double, keeping him out of the fight for a little while. He's got this. Looking for the kill and the Hauntzer gets it. That's a one for one. Top laners both dead. 4v4, CLG are looking for the chase. Sticks like slowed down by a Luden's Echo Riley's. Thanks to his <laughs> They have got to be careful, but they're going for this. Oh, it's a uh, Baron empowered recalls though. Yeah. But Scarret's out. Ooh. That actually means double number is advantage yeah. for CLG. Let's go. Here comes the push forward. Half HP, QSS is ulti in for Smithy. And then look for Yellow. Star, the damage for Stick Say can't quite He's get it. A <laughs> heal comes out. Looking for the auto attacks, can't find the damage though. Ah! You think what he tried to out? I'm laughing. With the Baron and Power Recall, I was like, oh my god, he abandoned his team, but he makes it back at the end. The Baron, of also, yeah, the home oh guard boost right out of the base. The healer has arrived just in time. Oh my goodness, and only the top players to go out. This time, TSM grabbed the Baron, blow for blow here. And keep in mind, Stixay burned Flash and Heal to try to reach to get into range for those killing blows. So he burned two summoners. And Mercurial for the one second speed. Right. I mean, like, he burned every active he had and still didn't get any kills on the back side of that one. Yeah, so because TSM got the jump on this, they were able to rent the Baron down. But then it's such a back and forth push and pull fight. Huhi wasn't able to ult backwards, but Darshan actually buys a tremendous amount of time on the backside, even and, though this seems And this is so rich. Choice. To pull off a team fight where you're split, your main tank is on the other side, and Darshan tries to make it all the way through from CLG's extremely risky there. They do get the one kill because Smithy has Gragas cornered on the outside, and Kindred will take down Gragas, uh, even though he's a top lane Gragas. This late into the game, all the stacks there. Smithy is really done. strong this game. Yeah. He's doing a whole bunch of damage in all these fights. 14,400 gold, which is 2,000 more than Sven Skarin. It's a really big deal. Yeah, Smithy, Hurricane, right, and the standard Sterix mob build is going to be a lot of damage for Not challenging my... Yeah, sure. Well, challenging leads for both these guys, but yeah, also the Rileys and the Zonias. It's, it's pseudo-tanky, but very damage-focused for both these junglers. Okay, so... After that explosive team fight, remember both top Figure laners. To top laners burned their teleports, but CLG still have. Uh, okay, just got escape. He pushed too far. Yep, that's the second time who he's had to do this though. And again, so they burn the teleport just to get that minion wave into the top side turret. TSM though, um, actually just farming, so not a yeah. whole lot gained there with that extra teleport. TSM unable to do anything with the Baron buff is the crucial thing. They got Baron. It was yeah. a one for one. You can see the actual Baron power play itself. CLG just swept yep. a bunch of minion waves and kept the game close. Yeah, I definitely feel like Huhi's damage takes off now with the Lich Bane, so that'll be very interesting in the next fights. We just need to figure out kind of where the next breaking point is going to be, because the dragons are very close, the gold is very close, and the fights have actually been very close. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Huhi uh, Hu himself, just with the pressure. He's going to have pressure on the back line of TSM, so Doublet is going to have to be very careful about where he throws Yellowstar in these team fights, because if he gets rid of his peel, Echo and... Poppy can very easily just execute it. And TSM have to respect who he split push. The Lich Bane that he talked about on Echo, he can quickly take down one of these exposed inhibitors. For now, oh. they're respecting him with the two versus one, but Darshan's over in the wings. Damage on who he's staying alive for now, but here comes the cavalry. A nice knockback gets rid go of the Kalista. They still look for the damage. Spencer and forced to jump away with his flash, and the rest of the team is now on raid. It's a five versus Yerkes four. Here, though. Up Yerkes in five on they five. Through on Spencer. Here's the knock in, but he doesn't find anyone to go for Hanser. Now to the backside, Zonia's pop up in Italy. Here's the re engage. Who he gets it? That's one for zero. The son of a yellow star. He's going down, and Braum will fall. It's a two for one, though. Kinnerlty does not save anybody of note who he has already dropped, but it's a third kill picked up for Darshan. CLG winning another team fight. And the, the inhibitors are exposed here. CLG still with the 280 carries up. They can get right in there. Double lift. And Bjergsen as well, gonna match them. It's Corky Kalista. Yeah, Stixay still full health. Another teleport coming in at 
full health. 30 seconds on these death timers. Maybe CLG runs clean across the inside of the base to go for the second explosion. Yeah. Or they go for the end. This game is endable. Callista Corky don't exactly have good frontline tools to survive these kinds of champions. Dark Binding lands, someone dies. They're going for the two inhibs. They are going for the inhibs, but there's still 20 seconds on most of the respawns here. Poke on Afro Mood, TSM playing it safely enough. CLG doing the same, actually. Not risking the game, just the double inhib and the safe Ooh. recall. Ooh, boy. That fight, though. That provides so much pressure for CLG. All right, let's take another look at how that one started out as Afro Afro flash binding full range lands onto Sven. Hunter missed his body slam flash there that was going to be an initiation attempt on Afro or Stixay. The Black Shield was there, but that was fight changing the fact that he couldn't make it in. Then he alts backwards and doesn't have really much effect. So Hunter unable to land those crucial, hard to execute plays on Gragas. And who he, who he mentioned having that assassination potential does get that towards the end. That was so critical that Gragas was unable to get his body slam flashing. Definitely massive. Oh my God. Those. Speaking of critical, his health is dangerously low. Thunderlord's triggered by Bjergsen, gets the damage across. Now the ulti will get the knockup on a CLG support, but there's no follow-up. So Yellowstar ulted for nothing, and that's going to be a problem. Yeah, well, they already have two inhibitors down, so they're trying to hide in the fog of war, get a quick pick or damage, and then run back to defend. They also have Haunter clearing one wave of super minions. So yeah. TSMs, they're really in a bind right here because they have essentially two waves of super minions that they have to deal with when a team is already splitting them up the way CLG has. CLG now has so many tools to use with the two inhibitors down and Baron popping up in 55 seconds. Scuttle Crab was taken, but it will time out. CLG can just wait it out uh, at, right, where, right when uh, Baron spawns. They have a lot of wards to clear out, though. TSM have been able to place that at least. A lot of minion duty for TSM yeah. to take care of first, though. And if a minion wave ever gets close to that ward on the inhibitor in TSM's base, expect CLG to be looking for a teleport to end the game with. Like, yeah. they're very willing. It is Darshan. I mean, you have TP up right now on Blue Elixir, Lich Bane, Huhi. Like, could oh, the luck... Ward, the ward just died. Aww. That's sad. But if the minions show up... <laughs> then they can just do that, yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll see if they can find any more plays here in this one. Black Shield and Stick Save. Plenty of range on him. Binding on a Yellow Star, but no follow-up damage available just yet. But a Black Shield Rapid Fire Cannon, Caitlyn. There's not a lot of counterplay to that Siege. Yeah, the, sp the trap spam here from Caitlyn and CLG is going to be huge. Double Lift is on top lane duty right now, trying to clear out these super minions that have stacked up. Well, Hurricane user, one of the best to do this, so Double is going to get plenty of gold. He's already level 18, it looks like, but still, the stats are nice to have. And as the gold floods in, Double Lift will turn into a very scary threat. So Jesus is trying to try and bait here. They just need to keep TSM out on the map and yeah. give time for the minions to do work. The thing is, if it's a clean 5v5 and they don't have any flanks or threats around the backside, that minion wave very bottom. Look at that thing team. crashing into that TSM was next really big. Yeah, and this is where CLG wants to move up a little bit aggressively because those minions are going to hold them there. A turret. There we go. Bottom next to it under fire right now, taking plenty of damage. Honestly, as the minion wave comes in, it might just kill it by itself. The banner minion yeah, will. from Afro certainly helping, and yes, and the turret goes minion. down. So CLG baiting TSM long enough to get a Nexus turret. TSM, though, take that loss in order to contest for Baron because CLG have started it. Good Chaplin spear. On a stick, say. CLG still waiting around. And actually, Hanser is inside the base. They're trying to force his teleport to come out. As Baron have to make a choice. Here is the TP, and immediately on Q. Great disengage. Gaming, runs Great. away. They need the pop. Oh, they can re-engage. Looking for the play. The big knock of an app goes Brom. Here comes the battle. Who he forced ults away. Zonia's on from Svenskeren. Stixay is low, getting hit up by Kalista. In goes Yellowstar. Kitted up the other back line. CLG staying alive. Now the re-engage. Yellowstar can't stay alive. Zonia's popped by Huhi. Looking for the kill. Can't find it yet. Now in a Hauntzer. A kill in a Huhi. TSM tried, but they can't get it. It's a two for one. Meanwhile, minions are inside. Inside the base, both teleports are up as well, and this CLG have to make a choice. Pearson as Pearson him, goes into the back line. It's a two versus three in favor of TSM. Pearson is going to kill everyone. Oh my God. Is going to drop as well. TSM looking for the final couple of kills. But can they even oh, win the dodge? Pearson's the DPS, and they have a support back. The minions He's got to run. It. He's got to run, it and it's awesome. not going to be enough. The it. minions <laughs> live up to their name. Afro Moo making the game winning push thanks to the banner, thanks to the delay. Good